Glad to be with you. So uh, I'd like to get your reaction to where we are today. United Nations Security Council yesterday urging everyone to show restraint. Um, it depends now on if Israel chooses to do that. As you and I have discussed before, there have been a lot of things that could have been done leading up to this as far as the nuclear sites in Iran that you think the U.S. could have maybe been stronger in defensive um, attacking them. But now it looks like this could be the next move in play if you're Israel and don't want to just sit back. What is your read, sir? Well, we can tell from the debates within the Israeli uh, war cabinet that they've made a decision they are going to retaliate. So to the extent President Biden and others urge no retaliation, which I think was shameful, uh, I think the Israelis are going to reject that. I think the debate now is how strong the retaliation is going to be, and that's an important question. I think we should recognize uh, Israel has been under attack by Iran and its terrorist proxies all over the Middle East since October the 7th. And uh, some of these terrorist proxies like Hezbollah are very, very heavily armed with missiles and drones. So Israel's got to think of its own security. But uh, the, the principal threat that Iran poses to the whole world, not just the region, is its effort to get nuclear weapons. And Israel as the little Satan would be the first target of those nuclear weapons. But the United States is the great Satan. Uh, in the words of the Ayatollah, uh, I think is is at risk, as, as are our other friends and allies. The U.S. shouldn't be criticizing Israel now. It shouldn't be uh, uh, acting as if it had a win, as the president apparently told Netanyahu uh, over the weekend, simply because no Israelis died. That That's not a win. That's dodging the bullet, literally, in this case, over 300 bullets. The question is, what makes Iran stop firing missiles and drones uh, at Israel. And I think retaliation would go a long way to making that point. Well, as we watch that, we know that uh, the U.S. did shoot down the drones and also U.K. was involved, Saudi Arabia and Jordan. Uh, did Iran get somewhat, although they weren't successful, did they get somewhat of a domestic win to kind of quell some of the folks that they wanted to show that they would respond after Syria? And do you believe that when they, they say this matter is over, that it would be? Um, or do you think they're just plotting, no matter what Israel does, that they have other ulterior motives, knowing that Joe Biden's still here in the White House and, you know, frankly, hasn't enforced sanctions and has given them billions of dollars? I think part of the trouble is they're not worried about the United States. They, they don't see Biden as having the spine to cross Iran's red line of not attacking uh, on their territory. And there's a very interesting piece of information. The Wall Street Journal reported yesterday that I don't think is getting much attention. But uh, the, the figures that uh, Israel uses, the U.S. uses, roughly 115 to 130 ballistic missiles fired by Iran, not counting the cruise missiles, not counting the drones. Wall Street Journal, uh, citing an, an anonymous U.S. official yesterday, said half of those missiles crashed on launch or didn't make it far enough to get shot down, uh, which means that uh, when we say 99 percent of the 320 plus projectiles were shot down, I'm, I'm not sure that's right. These numbers are moving around. Maybe it indicates even more ballistic missiles were fired that aren't in that 320 category. But but just the total volume of what uh, the Iranians fired could have caused enormous damage in Israel if they had gotten through. And not every day will be as good for missile defense technology as uh, Saturday night was.